All right, so these next few videos are related to features that are most relevant in setups that are trying to achieve high player counts. So if you're only trying to get 50 to 100 players or less than that, you can get away with a lot of stuff and it's probably better for you to get away with as much as you can because then you can spend that time developing other things. But if you're hitting a thousand plus clients, then you need to make things more efficient because you're at a scale where any little bit of unoptimized code will cause bottlenecks, right? So the situation we're thinking about in this example is let's say a thousand clients and let's only focus on the send side. So we'll talk about receiving messages later, but we're just talking about the server is constantly sending updates to the clients. And with a thousand clients that we constantly have to keep up to date, we could hit a bottleneck, right? If we're not careful about how we do this, if we don't optimize it a little bit, then this might be a big problem. So before we get into what the optimized solution or more optimized solution is, let's think about what the intuitive approach is. So imagine we have a server sending update messages to one particular client and the way it's thinking of sending these messages is as soon as I know that a client needs an update message, I'm going to send it, right? So imagine each of these points where the server sends a message is just in the simulation whenever it determines that there are changes that are relevant for that client and that need to be sent. It's going to gather that data together. It's going to put it in a message, serialize that message, and then send it up to the OS's networking layer. So the effect that we would see is the server would be sending messages out at about the simulation tick rate, right? So this is fine if it can handle it, but sending networking traffic at the same rate as the simulation isn't necessary. So it's cool, in a perfect world, we would just do that, but it isn't necessary and often it's a problem if we try to do that. Why? Well, when we're sending this frequently and doing what games do, which is sending small bits of data, then we're gonna incur a lot of overhead at the packet level. And I'm gonna explain that in better detail later, but all we need to know right now is sending this quickly could be a problem. And additionally, we don't have any lever to pull if this is a problem. The only thing we can do is change the simulation tick rate. And we don't wanna do that because it would affect a bunch of other stuff. So what we actually wanna do is separate the simulation tick rate from our networking behavior. So it's simil similar to what we often do for the render tick rate and the simulation tick rate. They used to be linked back in the day for various reasons, but nowadays we separate them so that we have individual control of the two things. We want the same for the network. So instead of sending this at the simulation tick rate, we wanna set up a separate network tick and send messages at that tick rate. And what would happen is when the simulation comes around and it sees that a message should be sent to a particular client, it'll queue that message instead of immediately sending it. Then when the network tick comes around, it's going to take all the messages that are in the queue and send them to the appropriate clients. So something we run into immediately is if we are sending at a network tick rate that is less than the simulation tick rate, then at some point we're going to be sending more than one message at a time. And if that's the case, then we need to add a little bit of information so that the client knows how many messages to expect. So that's where message batching comes in. So again, the problem is there are different types of headers that the client is expecting. It's expecting originally a batch header or the header that I showed briefly in a previous video 
That includes things like ingest, adjustment information and whatever other things the server needs to be sending at the network tick rate. So the client needs to know, am I expecting a batch header next or am I expecting an actual message header, right? So it's just a small thing we need to add. All we need to do is in the batch header, tell the client how many messages are a part of this batch, All right? So let's go back to this doc that I showed you before where we have the header information and this is from the Amalgam Engine. So we see here what we looked at before, the adjustment information. So you may have something like that. You may have taken a different approach, but you'll probably have some amount of information that you only want sent once per batch. So as long as that's the case, as long as you have some sort of batch header, you'll need a message count. If you don't have any batch header, if the only thing that you're sending is the individual messages, then you don't need uh, a message count because the thing that the client will expect is always a message header. But if you do have some type of batch header, then you need a message count field in it. So the message count is just the number of messages that should be expected to follow the header. So if the message count was two, for example, we would see a batch header with a message count of two, and then the client would know to expect a message type, a message size, one message, and then a second message type, message size, and message, and then it would go back to expecting a batch header next. So pretty simple. I mean, that's it really, as far as the implementation of this part goes. But I do think it's relevant to uh, go down and look at really what the main benefit of this is. And it's in what we talked about before, being able to split things out, but there's a bigger thing with regards to performance, and that is how efficiently we're using the overhead of the IP and either TCP or UDP packets that our messages are going to be wrapped in at the networking level. So the numbers in here are inflated because during these tests, I was keeping my heartbeat pretty high. So don't freak out too much about that. But this uh, data is a good illustration of what happens as you send more or less data at a single time or in a single message. So what we have here is me doing empirical testing to see if I send uh, or if I have this number of clients connected to my server, how much of the data that I send is going to be real usable data and how much of it is going to be overhead from the IP and in my case, TCP layers. So when I had one client connected, I was using 154 bytes per second, but including the overhead, I was actually sending 1250 bytes, so 88% overhead. So like I said before, because of the way games work, because we send small bits of data very frequently, that's not very friendly to how our networking is set up. Our networking is set up to be uh, much more efficient if we're sending larger pieces of data less frequently, because then the uh, overhead that goes along with each individual packet is lessened. So here we can see as I increase the amount of data that I'm sending, I'm sending larger messages in relation to the packet overhead. So I'm getting less of an overhead percentage. So we see as the data goes up, continually get less overhead, and eventually the overhead goes down to just 20%. And down here, it even goes down to 10%. So the difference between this 20 and this 10, I have the same number of clients connected, but I'm sending twice the number of inputs per second. So it's straight up doubling the amount of data, same amount of messages, but twice as much data per message. So it cuts the amount of overhead in half. So this goes towards why we want to be doing batching as much as possible. Our ideal situation would be to find out the 
uh, slowest rate at which we can send messages to our client. We want to wait as long as possible before we send our updates because then we can batch a bunch of them together and get a lot of efficiency from each of our packets. So that is it. Yeah, I think that's all. Short video. So thanks for watching. Next thing is going to be, I think we'll go over the receive side. So this was the send side. There's going to be receiving going on. So in that, I'll cover how to handle large socket counts. So you have a bunch of client sockets connected and how to handle lots of incoming messages, how to efficiently route those messages. So that's coming up. See you then.